my people how on a day i said let me make this quick video and share with you online because uh, we're starting to to have conversation more before we go deeply into the video please guys Vico, subscribe huh subscribe and give it a thumbs up because it's going to trigger the youtube algorithm and make this video available to other people i think this is and I, 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 like i told you we're working on this channel but i have to wait i i couldn't wait i just have to put this out there for you because i see a lot of misconception and i got a lot of messages and questions in regarding this particular topic now what is the topic um this individual is asking why nigerian music is dominating the entire african continent and why nigerian music why the nigeria nigerians are taking africa to the global stage you can see with the grammys with the Bonaboy covering arenas, uh, arenas in France, in Netherlands, in Switzerland. We're talking about arenas of 20,000 plus people all over the world. He's currently right now in the US. Not just Bonaboy, Fireboy, Rema, all these young, young artists are out there conquering. So, what are they doing differently? If you don't know, you can go online and find out that they're touring all over and they're killing shows. Now, this is what we are going to discuss this evening. But before I do that, I want to give us a disclaimer. Now, mind you, this is not to undermine other African countries' music. Other African countries have very, very, very good music. As a matter of fact, my favorite artist in Africa is Fatimata Diawara and Umu Sangari. And these people are Malians. I love them so much. If you want to know music, go to Rwanda. They have a very good music industry there. Go to uh, Kenya, very good artists there, Soti Soul and the rest of them. Go to Uganda, go to Tanzania, Namibia, go to South Africa and see I'm a piano there. Go to Ethiopia, all these countries, they are very fantastic. Go to Sudan and see their music. So I'm not talking about who does best, but among all these Africans, you know, go to Cote d'Ivoire, go to DRC, Congo, for example. Go to Cameroon. But the Nigerian music industry stands as among all of them. So the Nigerians are doing something differently. And this is what we're going to look into. Now, I'm not saying that the Nigerians are better than the rest of the continent, but I want us to look at the unique characteristics, the unique aspect of what the Nigerians are doing that is different, that make them to stand out, that make them to be globally accepted. Okay? This is what we want to talk about. Now, uh, one of the most important uh, points that always come up is this issue of population people always talk about oh nigerians are very populated this is the reason why their music is gone global and there is some element of truth in that statement and it's partly true and partly false and i'll give you i'll explain to you why uh, i always use the example of jamaica jamaica is a tiny country of 2.9 million people they are not even up to 3 million but they have produced reggae and dancehall they have their music went on to influence hip-hop music as a matter of fact, the person who invented hip-hop is a Jamaican. So this tiny little country have created a global genre. So it is not about population, but it's about a sound that is accepted by people all over the world. Now, the, the, the reggae dancehall became so popular that even other countries, have, it has gotten a, Nami, a Grammy category uh, and billboard. You know, this is how powerful some of these sounds are. So the issue of population is a, is a non-starter. Now, why do I say it's partly true and partly false? It is partly true because Nigerians in the diaspora actually spread Afrobeat. When you go to nightclubs, you go to bars, you meet Nigerians there, they will pay DJs to play Afrobeat music there. They spend their money to promote this uh, genre of music. Uh, so anywhere Nigerians are, they play in their party, they play Afrobeat. So they try to promote it in their own way. You know, so this is where the argument of population now serves the utility. Now, the number one thing I want to speak about the Nigerian music industry is their focused. Focused. These people are some of the most focused music industry I can ever tell you. Now, there are other uh, industry countries that are confused. They are trying to copy reggae dancehall. They call it Afro dancehall. They are trying to copy rap and doing all sorts of things. But the Nigerians, Nigerians do, the Nigerians do actually have all this genre. Reggae dancehall, Afro dancehall. Nigerians have rappers, M.I., Abagas, and all those people. But they did something. All of them unconsciously, collectively decided to agree to focus their mind on promoting one particular genre of music. It is not a conscious effort. It was unconscious because they saw that this is this is the sound that is going to be globally accepted. And boom, 
all the new artists aligned themselves. Even rappers started to be, do Afrobeat. So there's an unconscious, unconscious communication of something that sells. Once they see it, they identify it, and boom, they keep hitting, hitting, hitting. Now you have two people doing now, you have 10 people doing now, you have 15 people and 20 people doing it. And that is how they take this music genre to the, to the world. Now the second point I want to make is Nigerian music is family oriented. It's family friendly. Now, compared to other African music genre, for example, let's say I'm a piano, for example, a family can listen to it, okay? Uh, let's say, but let's say hip hop. Oh, uh, let's say hip hop, for example, or reggae dance hall. Now, I don't have anything against hip hop or reggae dance hall, but there are some languages that you use that is not family friendly. Uh, some family, some family would not like to play some song that use the word nigger, that use the word bitches, that use the word all sort of derogatory word against women. Some people will not use those things. Okay. So Afrobeat has shy away from all these things. It doesn't sexualize women. It doesn't vilify uh, women. It doesn't call them with the B word. It doesn't use the N word. Uh, yeah, in some instances, yes, but it doesn't promote some of this ideology. And then the second one is that um, Afrobeat is socially relatable. And I'll explain to you why it's so. Now, I tried to listen to a Ghanaian artist. His name is Shatawale. And I listen to his song. There's no substance in it. He's just he's just taking he's just talking about his life, his money, how he's better than other people, how he passed this one. And I was like, okay, he maybe he's singing it for entertainment. But when you listen to Nigerian music, because I, I use Shatawale because he has been bashing Nigerians for not accepting his song, right? But Nigerians cannot accept a song that doesn't have substance. And this is what I mean. If you listen to Buga, for example, by Kiz Daniel, Buga is talking about working hard relaxing and enjoying nigerians sing about love they sing about wedding they sing about family values they sing about uh listen to uh, uh, uh you know they sing about uh, peace square ada ada my baby ada all these songs when people listen to it they fall in love with it because this is this is their topic this is what they they love to hear women particularly love love songs you know, so the Nigerians know these things and they focus on it. it, it the prime example of this is what P-Square did recently. They released three music. Number one was Ama Piano and the second one was Wedding Music. Why did you think they do that? Because they know the agenda and they try to do it and they promote it. Now, another thing, the third one I want to speak about uh, is how, uh, no, the fourth one is how the Nigerian music industry is structured in such a way that they always bring out, at least if not, five or four new artists every single year you might not hear of them all, but they are always coming out and they remain low-key producing producing you hear one year two years before they blow and then another generation is coming and these guys keep churning out talent talent upon talent when i say talent upon talent i mean it because they some of them are so creative somebody like ck this guy know exactly how to produce and to capture the world he infuses uh, uh, the Southern American songs and infuse all sorts of sound, even Indian sound, like what Rema does, to capture the mind of the people. Yes, and the agenda, I spoke about the agenda already. The agenda is to focus on, on you know, creating uh, everybody abandoning other genre of music. While other industries are being distracted, they are trying to copy the Jamaicans, they are trying to copy the Americans. The, some of them are even trying to sound like the Americans. Some rappers and all this. Nigerian rappers don't do that. Some of them have abandoned the now rap in their local language, and that's what they do. They try to show pride, they show their, their African culture. Okay? Now, another, uh, this thing I want to point out about the Nigerian music industry, this is the fifth one, the sixth one, um, is that there's a massive respect for the old OGs. So the new artists that are coming up, they don't disrespect the old ones that have set in the background for them. It is a culture in Nigeria that you respect your elder, you respect the people that lay the background for you. So this culture has been, you know, we take it to the music industry. You know, Tubaba is being respected. Yeah, Peace Square, all these people. Fela, for example, Fela, there is a there is a festival for Fela, they call it Felaboration. And Fela is respected, it's highly revered. I hardly see that in any music industry now. If you go to South Africa, you don't see them worshipping Brenda Fassi. You don't see them worshipping uh, uh, Melia Makeba, for example, you know. But these are their legend, you see. But in Nigeria, 
We worship Fela like a god. Fela is actually a god in Nigeria. He has a shrine dedicated to him. Okay? And another thing I want to point out is that uh, this is the, uh, the seventh one. That Nigerians are travelers. Now, some group of people came in and were like, Oh, Nigerians love our country. They come to our country. As a matter of fact, this statement was made by Stoneboy, a Ghanaian artist. A Stoneboy. Uh, this guy is an artist, a uh, very uh, A-list artist in Ghana, but he kept pushing this agenda and I listened to him and I laughed. He said that Nigerians come to take some blessings in their industry. And I listened to it and I smiled because I don't know if he's sincere or he's just being funny with it. Because that is the most delusional comment I've ever heard in my life. Because Nigerians are natural travelers. There's no country in this world that you not see a Nigerian. Go to Mongolia, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan. Anywhere, China, anywhere, go to Saudi Arabia, or go to UAE, or, uh, go to Swaziland, or, uh, go to Mauritius. You see Nigerians there, they travel everywhere and they are observing and they are learning. So the, for, the, for the fact that they come to your country to come and travel to visit your country doesn't mean they are coming to pick blessings. If your country is so, so much blessed, why haven't you blown yourself? Why can't you type this into the same uh, blessings and blow by yourself? So that argument is completely lame. So Nigerians are natural travelers. They travel a lot. They don't... I know, and one other thing with the danger with that statement is that once this person that is making this statement, he's, he's so comfortable in his country, he's so self-centered in his country that he doesn't feel the need to travel out to conquer other African countries. Sakodi, Stomboy, Shatawale, none of them can go to Uganda and perform. But look at somebody like Rema, he's filling up stadiums. Okay, so another thing is that Nigerians, this is the eighth one, Nigerians have taken, they understood that there is music entertainment, then there is music business. Somebody like Mr. Easy, he no longer does music, but he owns and he owns record labels right now and, and, and uh, distribution channels and he's bringing out new artists, the Nigerian acumen that need to be studied these guys have conquered spotify they have conquered all the streaming platform they know how to do music as business bonaboy for example he knows how to collaborate with artists give them some shares of money and he makes his own money this is how this thing works it's very simple while other people why other people from other country are seeing music as a charity work some of them say that oh uh we we helped nigerian artists they say that we give them background, we give them opportunity, but they don't want to help. Nigerians don't do that. As a matter of fact, one of the arguments they brought in is that we invite Nigerian artists into our country to play their music, but they don't invite us in. Why would they invite you? Uh, 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 show organizers will invite people that will come and listen to their song. If your music is not popular in Nigeria, why should a show organizer invite you to come and sing? And there's something strange about this Nigerian music industry is that not even the American artists can't even come to Nigeria. Nobody will go and listen to them. Nigerians must be a very massive fandom there before they will listen to you. So it's crazy how these things are. So the reason why these countries invite Nigerian artists is not because they love Nigerian artists more or because uh, they want to be charitable or they are more charitable. No, they love you invite Nigerian artists because you love their music because they do good music and they know how to market it. As a matter of fact, the Nigerians have almost every DJ in African country. Go to South African Spotify. You will see Whiskey that's number two. Out of top 10, you see the top 3 are Nigerian music. How is that even possible? It's because all the DJs, study South Africa, top, top, out of top 10, top 3 are Nigerians. Nigerian music, Essence. And another one, uh, some of this music, uh, Mona Lisa. Dominating South African chart. Go to Uganda, out of the top 10 are all Nigerian music. Go to Kenya, top 10 are Nigerian music. Go to Rwanda, top 10. Go to Sierra Leone, go to Liberia, go to Tanzania. Top 10 in Tanzania, the way Diamond Platinum is the king there. Top 10 music. Eight of them are Nigerian music. Only one of them was Diamond Platinum and one other guy like that. I think his name is something Magnify or something like that. I was like, whoa, this guy, they cover all the chart all over Africa. Even in Ethiopia, even in Egypt and Morocco. So this is how they do. They understand the business. So they know how to buy DJs. They know how to buy all these distribution channels in all this country. They pay the money to promote their music. This is what other artists don't do. They will never go to this country. They will never travel to this country and go and pay DJs to 
play their music, but they will sit down in their comfort of their country and be forcing people to listen to their music. They will, if you don't, they start to insult you. So another, yeah, is the marketing that was discussed about. And then another aspect is that Nigerians, they use comedians, right? You're an upcoming comedian. You are not known properly. Look at someone like Sabinos now. He, he uh, They feature him in Buga. Buga video within one month had 43 million views. Sabinos has reached 43 million people. Nigerian artists, they use comedians, they use actors. You see them show up in these videos that they collaborate, they are in sync, the whole entire is, is an ecosystem, is a symbiotic relationship, both the actors, the in short, the comedians, the Nigerian comedians invite legendary actors to participate in their comedy and they show support, something you hardly see in other entertainment industry, hardly. Now, the last one I want to mention, the most important one is the Nigerian culture. Now, many people don't pay attention to this. Nigerians speak uh, rap, they pick I'm a piano, everything they pick, any sound they pick, they infuse the Nigerian culture into it. And Nigerian culture has become a soft power diplomacy now that almost all African countries can really. I saw uh, Kiss Daniel in, uh, in, in, in Tanzania and even in Uganda, he was singing uh, Buga and he was, they, were, they were all singing in Yoruba language. I was, I was amazed. I was like, wow, this is incredible. You know, so this is how this thing works. So, this is the cultural aspect. These are the top 10 things that Nigeria. So the one number one thing I made mention is focus. Nigerians are very focused. They don't allow themselves to be distracted by so many genres. They focus on one general agenda. They focus on Afrobeat and they want to take it to the world. Nigerians are so focused to the point where right now they have succeeded in lobbying and getting Afrobeat a billboard chart, both in the UK and in the US. Many people don't know that they, it is Nigerians behind this thing. You know? Now, they are also lobbying to get Billboard a Grammy uh, nomination uh, in the Grammy category. Now, and then, then I, I said the, the other one I said that the Nigerian music is family friendly. They don't use vile words. If you can listen to it among children, among families, and all those things. And also socially re relatable. A lot of they use topic of love, wedding, uh, marriages, heartbreaks, and people can relate to them easily. Okay. And then they also churn out a lot of artists every year. Every single year, they churn out nothing less than four or five new artists, okay? And they have agenda. And then they respect their elders. They respect the legendary elders, people like Fela and all those things. And then they also, they also travel a lot. They are not comfortable in their country. They will not say, oh, because Nigeria is a very big country. Uh, some people have a very small country, but they are content. They, are, they think if they are big in their country, they think they are big all over the world. No, Nigerians are not like that. Now, as big as Nigeria is, Nigerians are not even satisfied with Africa. They want to conquer the whole world. So they travel a lot. They travel a lot. They go to countries, they learn new sound, and they package them, repackage them, refine them, and push them out. So they do music as business, you know, and they do marketing also. They change their marketing strategy. They find ways to do it. When I say they do music as business, they buy DJs, they buy radio stations to play their music in South Africa, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in so many places. That's what they do. You know, and then they infuse their culture, their language, their aesthetics, their beauty, uh, the way they comport themselves, their swag and all those things. This is why Nigerians are dominating. There's no secret about it. Other countries are trying. You know, other countries have good music, but their marketing strategy is probably poor. Uh, probably they don't see music as business. They just see it as entertainment. They just do it and they don't know some of this aspect. You know, and they don't also collaborate with some of their uh, legendary actors or comedians. Or they probably don't invite legendary actors to participate in it. Okay? But these are the things that Nigerians are doing differently. This is what I'm trying to point out for you to see. Okay? So I'll just stop here because this video is getting too long. And I would like to hear your opinion about this. Just leave your comment and then give the video a thumbs up. Okay? Um, but because the youth is going to trigger the YouTube are going to make it more popular and more accessible to other people. So thank you. Sharp guys.